we got to talk about George Kittle. Uh, and I do want to talk about the defensive side of the ball a little bit here, too, in the 49ers' first-round pick there in Javon Kinlaw. But George Kittle's contract is going to hang over the 49ers' offseason until it gets done. And if I am the agent of George Kittle, I would advise him not to show up until I get that contract based on what he should be making and what he's making right now, which is peanuts. So how difficult will this negotiation be, being that he has to go to a new territory that the team might not feel comfortable with going and paying a tight end some you know, $5 million more per year than any other tight end in the league? I think it's going to get weird, Brian, because I think the Niners do business a little bit like the A's. They're a little bit like Moneyball. I think they kind of require most of their players to give them a break, give them a discount. I mean, you always hear about Parag Maroth getting those team-friendly deals, protecting the 49ers. And that's great, um, but you can't really do that with players like George Kittle, DeForest Buckner, the, the best of the best, the blue chip of the blue chip. Those players aren't inclined to take less than they're worth. Uh, you kind of just have to give them the going rate uh, and be happy to have them or, or, or move on and build your team around uh, play, lesser players, basically. So, I mean, what, what we heard from John Lynch is that they're confident that something will get done, but they're searching for the sweet spot, meaning they're waiting for a compromise. What we've heard basically from Kittle's agent is, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, Kittle's a special player. He needs a special contract. And I trust, they trust that the 49ers will do the right thing, which to me sounds like code for uh, give us what we want. And I, I could see that. I mean, that's basically was, was Buckner's attitude. Like, look, we, we liked playing for the 49ers, but this is DeForest Buckner. Um, he has a, uh, a, a, a price tag that any number of teams would be willing to pay, pay up or don't. Um, and then not, and I think if, if George Kittle takes that approach as well, it's going to get really weird. If he doesn't, if he gives him a break, he'll stay. And I think everyone kind of expects that eventually Kittle will give him a break. And I don't really know why we feel that way. Maybe just because Kyle Shanahan drafted him and we think maybe Kittle thinks he feels a little indebted to the, to the Niners, but maybe he doesn't. He really shouldn't. I mean, if you were, like you said, if you were his agent, you'd be saying, hold out, get what you deserve. Um, you, you earned it. Was there something too, and we saw it at the time, we did not know that the Buckner stuff was happening behind the scenes. Do you think that the 49ers sniffing around with Austin Hooper was a sign that maybe they're thinking, okay, maybe we'll do the same thing instead of with Buckner, but with George Kittle, knowing what his asking price was going to be? No question. The way I pieced the, uh, the puzzle together, the Niners and Kittle met in February. Uh, Kittle made a contract request demand. Uh, the Niners didn't, didn't, they made theirs. There was no, uh, and there's been no contact since then. So they are sort of negotiating indirectly. And I feel that um, when, what, what, when, when Kittle asked for what he wanted and, and basically said, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm not going to budge. This, I'm going to wait for you to give me what I want. The Niners response was, okay, well, we're going to see if we can sign Austin Hooper. You know, we're going to give Austin Hooper a little bit less than we wanted to give you. And that's our message uh, saying, you know, you're not going to get what you want. You don't have the leverage here. And then I, when they didn't get Hooper, they traded Buckner. And again, that's, that's an implied message to Kittle. Like, don't think we won't do the same to you. <laughs> if we traded Buckner, we would we'll, we'll trade anyone. At least you so do I, have that chip in the bargaining and say, hey, look what we did with this other stud player on the opposite side of the ball. Like, we're not going to budge. This is our this is our number that, that it's going to be a fascinating negotiation and fans will start to freak out like it, Kittle Buckner is one thing. I think Kittle's probably on another level, mostly just because he plays offense and scores points. If the 49ers were to move on from George Kittle, I mean, look out the front office would be under fire. No question. But what happened first is Kittle would hold out, as you said, you would advise him as his agent. And anytime a player holds out, a lot of fans turn on him. Yeah, that would happen first. He would go from being the fan favorite to being the heel, almost like uh, in professional wrestling. I mean, he would be like the Rock uh, when he was the corporate Rock. So um, that would happen first. And I, I think basically they're just fighting over leverage because although Kittle seems like he has the leverage, he can just say, "I'm the best player in the league. You need to pay me like that." The Niners have the leverage. Because uh, he's under contract for $2.1 million this year. There's nothing he can do to change that. He can hold out if he wants. That's, that's tough for him. Then next year, they can give him the franchise tag. For, for, for a tight end, that's less than $11 million. That's still less than what he wants. So that's two years, roughly $13 million, as opposed to what he wants would be like probably five years, 
a hundred million or something like that. So they have him under control for for an affordable rate for like four years. Next year at two, the year after that at ten, the year after that at like thirteen, the year after that at like fifteen or sixteen. So really, um, I think Kittle's gonna have to lower his demands or be prepared to hold out a very very long time.